risk? How do you manage risk? What methods do you employ to minimise losses uh, or when your analysis or positioning is on a very rare occasion incorrect? <laughs> Actually, most of my trades were incorrect, if I'm going to be perfectly honest. I would say that I probably have a ratio, I'm guessing, of somewhere between, and I haven't actually worked out, I worked out once in the past over a couple of years, probably about 70 to 80% of my trades are losing trades. Um, but they tend to be very small losers. Um, when they start going my way, I add to them, and I tend to make a lot more money on the winners than the losers. Um, that process needs very strict risk management and money management. You need to have rigid stop losses in place. So you need to know how much capital you're playing with to start with, how much leverage you have, how that capital affects your leverage. Obviously as your capital reduces, your leverage reduces. So I'm, I'm, I'm almost religious about how much I've got to play with. And that, like I say, that sets the position size, not the other way around. The position size doesn't guide anything. The amount of risk I'm willing to put on at any one time guides the position size. Obviously, I, I, I'm a believer in less is more. Simple is far better. The more complex, if I have too many positions on board, um, some of them can really be the same position uh, expressed in three or four different ways. So I'm very conscious to sort of be managing that as well. Um, it's not a structure, it sounds structured, it's not, it's not totally structured, but I have a spreadsheet sort of analysing how much I can lose at any one time. If I have four or five positions on, I have four or five amounts that they could all lose. You know, sort of, let's say I'm, I'm playing with a trade and I've got a trade on here that could lose, if I go back to the old days, could lose 50,000, another one could lose 100,000, another one 200,000. I would play around with it, sort of what's the re reality of losing all three of them at the same time. And I would give myself a marker to adjust those positions because obviously there's some sort of correlation. I didn't trust the bank's correlation system, the bank's VAR system. So I trusted my own far more. Um, and that's one of the reasons I kept it simple because if I ended up with seven or eight positions on, that became far harder to monitor. And in terms of um, staying on a wrong trade, I've had enough, I'm getting out. Uh, uh, sorry, in, is there any rule in terms of staying on a wrong trade, I've had enough, I'm getting out? Or have you basically decided that you're going to get out when it hits a certain sort of figure? No, I, 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 would, I would get to a boredom threshold. So if I, if I sell on the trade, it's gone on for a week, it's not happening, it's using my mental capital so that there is a stop loss. There's a mental stop loss in there as well. I'm wasting energy on it. I can look at it another time. So every trade takes a little bit of mental capital. And um, I don't know if you're familiar with the, um, the Gartman rules, but he says mental capital is more important than monetary capital. And, and that's so true. That's a great phrase, isn't it? Okay, uh, how do you determine if a trade has failed other than its performance after entry? Um, I would say, I don't, that's pretty much, for me, that's pretty much the, the one and only delineator. Um, do you ever average down into a losing trade? Never. I have done it in the past, and it was always a disaster. <laughs> I know people who do it, and I'm not saying don't do it, because there are people that do it. They do it in a structured way, that it's almost like part of their plan. They may not, they may not have written that plan, but in their head they had a plan. So I say there's people who do it, it's a very dangerous game, but there's some very skilled operators that do do it, that made a, made a career out of doing it. But they are, they do have very rigid get out rules, they're capable of handling that sort of size. Um, it's a mess, I, th I think most young people believe you could do it and get themselves in all sorts of messes with that. Um, like I say, there are experienced traders that do it, um, they have a lot of capital behind them normally, and it's normally part of their process. So I'm not saying don't do it, but I'm saying it's got to be done in very skilled hands. Trading process sometimes broken down by Dr. Van Tharp's chart, which includes three categories, 
System accounts for 10, money management accounts for 30, and psychology for 60. Do you agree with that? Um, I agree with the three. I agree with the three areas. Um, I've never broken it down into percentages. Um, I think I think it's impossible to disentwine all those things. They're all part of the overall um, uh, recipe. Um, it's it, probably for the sake of teaching it. It's probably good to try and classify it in those areas. Um, what you classify as psychology or behaviour, I'm never quite sure. I think that's, that's what you do. Um, and maybe you classify that as psychology behaviour. I mean, I work in that area, but I've never broken it down into anything like that. And I call mo mo money management is psychology to me. It's helping you to manage yourself. How you do the trade, how you think about it, how you manage your emotions, that's almost part of your nature and your, your personality sometimes. So I, I'm not going to disentwine it like that, but I think you know, he's definitely onto something.